yeah, I mean, even if I want it or not, right, it's political because of where I come from, right? I am from Pakistan. So even if I don't want that to be known or acknowledged, you know, I have an accent, I teach literature. I, the, the moment I walk into a classroom, you know, Pakistan walks into a classroom. Uh, just because I'm in academia doesn't mean that I can't say what I want. My name is Andrea Silva. I am an assistant professor at the University of North Texas in the Department of Political Science. And my areas of study are immigration politics in the United States, uh, racial and ethnic politics, and Latino politics. I have an obligation to my students to give them every opportunity or every understanding of a situation or a person or a party, right? That's my, that's my obligation to them, right? My obligation to them is to be as honest as possible about everything to my knowledge, to the extent of my knowledge, right? And that's what I do as a researcher. Within the academy, uh, as a scholar, free speech enables us and gives us the freedom to write about difficult topics and have an opinion, sometimes even against the institutions in which we serve. So I'm Masood Raja. I'm an associate professor of post-colonial studies. Um, I graduated from Florida State. I'm originally from Pakistan and I've been at UNT since fall of 2010. Most of my students probably I'll be the first Pakistani they are encountering. So my actions are not just my own. They become a representation of my larger culture, which Obvi obviously is not true because one person cannot represent a whole culture, but it becomes like that. So my work then is not just teaching the literature, but also through my conduct and interactions, introducing to them how a person from another culture who, who grew up there, came here, got an education, can teach literature in an American classroom, right? What does it take to do that? Beyond my classroom, of course, whatever I write is connected to the issues of social justice, it's connect, connected to issues of minority rights, rights of the people who are poor, right, gender uh, identity. So obviously whatever I write or publish is deeply political. And since I'm a post-colonialist, my field of study in itself is inherently political. So for me to assume that what I do is inherently or performatively political is almost like, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a fact. I am Dr. Sam Langsdale and I have a PhD in feminist philosophy and the study of religion. Whether my job as a professor is inherently political I think has a lot to do um, again with what I teach philosophy, uh, the fact that I am a woman, and that I'm contingent faculty. I'm not tenure track, which means I'm not in a permanent position. Uh, so those are all political in slightly different ways. Uh, again, I, I would have said two years ago that teaching things like feminism or environmental ethics are of course political topics because of the ways in this country. Climate change has been debated for decades because of the fact that women's bodies are often sites of political struggle. Then yes, of course, those subjects become political because of wider social movement. Now I think philosophy in general has become political because we've got to a place where there is a national dialogue about fact about truth. There has been a sort of surge in anti-intellectualism. I think philosophy itself is inherently political. I, as much as possible, want students to be thoughtful, informed, and skeptical social beings, right? Citizens, right? I love it. I think it's great. I think that students should protest. I think that they should go to city council meetings, which may be you know, a little less sexy, but nonetheless important, right? I think they should run for office. I think that they should um, contact their legislative representatives, right? Um, politics, uh, protests kind of seem like the, I suppose for students, like a, the lowest bar to begin, right? It's really easy to just show up. <laughs> um, and that can be the beginning, I hope, you know, for more political participation. People who have good skills, they could be good scientists, they could be good technicians, but in the end, unless they are also good and tolerant and compassionate human beings, we cannot really build a society that is tolerant and compassionate. And humanities, I think, 
have to play a crucial role in that. Um, I will just tell you that I began my career at the School of Oriental and African Studies in the University of London. Um, the nature of that institution, again, is quite political. It has a history of being involved in European imperialism and colonialism. So it was originated in order to train British officers in the languages of the colonies of the British Empire so that they could go more effectively colonize. That is inherently political. The kind of humanistic education that makes you an emphatic and compassionate human being, tolerant of differences and capable of love, right? And I think that's where in college or even in K-12 education, humanities can play a huge role.